ए हाई हेलो एवरी वन आई एम नवल यमल वेलकम बैक टू माई यूट्यूब चैनल डेटा मास्टर एंड वेलकम टू द प्ले लिस्ट ऑन द माइक्रोसॉफ्ट फैब्रिक इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू गो डीप डाइव इन टू वर्क स्पेसिस इन माइक्रोसॉफ्ट फैब्रिक एंड इन द पावर बी आई फॉर दैट लेट मी एक्सप्लोर द डॉक्यूमेंटेशन ऑफ द वर्क स्पेसिस इन माइक्रोसॉफ्ट फैब्रिक I'll give I'll be giving you the link for this documentation. So, what are workspaces? The so workspaces are the place to collaborate with the colleagues to create the collection of items. So, in Microsoft Fabric, we have an items like a lakehouse, warehouse, reports, or you can also create a task flow within this workspaces. So, your workspace once you have created, it looks something like this. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a workspace. And once you create a workspace, how to look at the settings of that, how to integrate it with the get, and how to look at the detail uh, endorsement and the details of the workspace. We are going to see that in the hands-on. So work with the workspaces. So we are going to set up a task flow for the works workspace. So what is task flow? So it is like to organize all your items you need it for your data projects so if you are working on one of the data projects what all things we need it and how your project would be flowing so for that we create a task flow so i'll be creating a separate video on the task flow we are going to go deep dive into it then we have uh, pin workspaces so if you have multiple workspaces you can quickly uh, pull out the workspaces you wish to you can pin those and you can use the granular workspace roles like we can set up a permission management in the workspace like a admin member contributor and the viewer so i'll make a separate video on this talking about the different roles and the permissions then we can create a new folders in the workspace we can navigate to the current workspace we're going to check the workspace settings and how we can manage the workspace in the kit so your current workspace should look something like this and this is your workspace layout so this is about the theory part i'll give you the documentation link let me jump on to the microsoft fabric hands on so i'm using a trial version here i'll just jump on to any of the experiences so as we all know microsoft fabric you is a software as a service which uses all the experiences like all the data people can work together you are if you are coming from data engineering background data science background data analytics background your machine learning background yes for everyone we have one single platform and we have a different experiences in it suppose if you are from a data engineering background we use a data engineering experience in data engineering experience we have different items in it so i have made a detailed video on the introduction on the microsoft fabric i'll give you the link on that you can check so inside each of this experience we have different items for example in data engineering we have an items like a lake house we have a data lake gen 2 we have a data flow gen 2 we have data flows pipelines and so on in data warehouses we have different items and so on so let me click on any one of the experience and we'll start creating a new workspace so let me just click on the data engineering and it shows you a message like welcome to the microsoft fabric so here you can see on the left side or the left pane you have workspaces i have already created few of the workspaces let me show you once i click on the workspaces you can see we have my workspace as a default workspace and i have created a few workspaces previously one is data master and one is data master dev i'll be creating a new workspace now i'll just hit on click on new workspace and the moment i click on the new workspace it's asking me the name of the workspace so now i'll just say the workspace name as data master youtube for youtube so whatever the experiences whatever the items i'm going to create it all will be stored inside this workspace you can give a description for this you can just say this workspace is for this workspace is for my youtube channel for my youtube channel okay you can give any workspace like this is for the project one this is for the business unit one this is for the dev environment and so on then you can start uh, giving a domain like i sign a domain it's an optional now you can set up a workspace image you can go to the advanced settings here like you have a contact list so now i'm the owner and 
you can see my organization details here you can add other people to this workspace and we have a license mode now i'm using a trial version but when it comes to microsoft fabric we have a few uh, licensing mode like a pro premium per user premium capacity we have a fabric capacity also we will be exploring about the licensing mode the pricing mode on the fabric in the later videos let me just click on apply let us keep it as a trial and just hit on apply within few seconds you will be getting a new workspace and you can find that workspace details in the workspace section if you just click on it you can see you got a workspace called a data master youtube so once you click on the data master youtube workspace you can pin that you can see you can pin it so what i'll do i'll try to pin this so that it will always be shown you at the top so for the quick flyout we can access this by using the pins so once you create a workspace your uh, workspace looks something like this which is divided into two sections majorly one is you have a work uh, workflow or you can simply call it a task flow so depending upon the projects you are working on you can add the task here you can do it manually or you can add it based on the pre-designed task flow so you can see select a pre-designed task flow so i'll make a separate video on what is task flow you can watch that in detail so we can create a task flow here and then we have a uh, items so whatever the items we will be creating you can find those items here okay so the workspace is divided in two sections here you can start creating a new folders here and it is always good practice to create a folders so when you try creating so many items and you are working on different experiences so being a data engineer we create a data engineering experience we use uh, databases we use data warehouses we use lake houses and so on so tracking them later on becomes difficult so we always recommend to create a folder structure and then you can create an items within that folder we will be doing it and you can pick up a new item from here by just hitting on this and you can see we have so many options now i'm shooting this video on 1st of january 2025 uh, microsoft fabric has launched in july 23 since then they have so many items now they have integrated it so we will be looking into each and every one in detail in the coming videos so we have an option like for getting the data into the microsoft fabric we have these all items for storage or to store the data we have these all for data preparation we have these all items and for analysis and for training the data for tracking the data for visualizing the data and for developing it you can see there are so many items uh, so we will be using few of them we'll just mark them as a favorite and we can use them later on by using this favorite so i'll just close this and you can create a folders as i told you you can just hit on create a folder and you can start saying that okay i'll be using day one folder i'll just hit on create and you can see we got a folder here within this folder we will be creating few items inside this okay and let me talk about the workspace settings the moment you click on the workspace settings you can see we got a general information so just in case if you want to rename the workspace name you can do that you can rename the description and you can assign the workspace to the relevant domain people you can do that and you can assign the workspace of your onedrive and your workspace contacts and we have so many other options like you have a license information as i've told you we are using a free trial but you can change them you can pick a pro premium or a uh, fabric capacity here let me click on this yeah we have an azure connection so if you are if your enterprise if your organization is already using an azure account and you want to pull the data from there it becomes easy to connect this workspace to the uh, to the azure account majorly we are talking about azure data lake gen 2 we can configure it by using this then we have uh, we will be doing it in the coming videos we have a system storage you can see the details about the whatever the items you create within this workspaces all can be tracked in the system storage here then we have a git integration so you can integrate it to your azure devops or you can go with your github also then we have a one lake so for every workspace whatever the experiences you are working on or whatever the items you are working on everything will be stored into one single storage called one lake 
So one leg is simple like the OneDrive. So if you have been using OneDrive from Microsoft 365, or if you have been using Google Drive, just an example, where we create a sheets, we create a Word document, PPTs, all those will be stored into one location that is Drive, OneDrive, or Google Drive, and so on but in simple words when you are talking about microsoft fabric you create different experiences here you create different items inside this all will be stored in one single place and that's called as a one lake yes i'm talking about structure semi-structured data i'm talking about unstructured data everything will be stored into this one lake as we progress further as we try creating a different items we'll start working on it i'll be creating a separate video on this one lake also then we have a workspace identity we have a network security we have a monitoring here we have the details related to the power bi so if you want to make a connection to your power bi you can do that for the data science and for data engineering we have a spark setting so most of the time as a data engineer we'll be working on the notebooks where we'll be using an apache spark tool a big data parallel processing and how you want to uh, do the spark setting you can set up that can see here we have a pools we have an environment we have a jobs now the latest version of spark is 3.5 and in that we are using the latest uh microsoft fabric version that is 1.3 now and we have uh, automatic logs concurrencies jobs and so on then we have a data factory so if you're talking about uh, microsoft uh, or azure data factory so where we try to create a pipelines we'll try to run it so the configuration details about the data factory is shown here so this is all about the workspace settings so a quick recap now on this so works uh, we are going we have discussed about the workspaces in microsoft fabric as well as power bi so why we are talking about power bi here because now if your enterprise is, is already using a power bi.com that is power bi service and if you just enable it to the microsoft fabric so you can get this type of workspace so that's the reason why we are talking about workspaces in microsoft fabric as well as in power bi so the workspaces are the place to collaborate with the colleagues to create the collection of items such as your lake houses your warehouses and the reports and you can workspaces helps you to manage the access to different people in the organization and also to the settings so we talked about the workspace and we created one workspace called data master youtube i explained you all about the uh, ui how the workspace looks like how to create a new folder so that was all covered in this video in the next video we are going to try creating a different items here i'm going to try start working on the data engineering experiences we are going to discuss few items in that and start working on it so i hope you enjoyed the content on this video thank you for watching see you in the next video guys bye bye